justifying and standing up for her best mate, Tony Abbott. Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. Over the last few days, or I should say, uh, come Thursday last week, uh, Credlin, Peter Credlin, the renowned Sky News commentator and opinion piece and arguably one of the best advocates for the Liberal Party that anybody could imagine, had watched Nemesis, which is a documentary on the turnover, the churn, if you like, within the Liberal Party uh, over the last few years. Now, in that particular piece... Uh, Credlin was named, identified and talked about and also, of course, was Tony Abbott. So Credlin found the need, therefore, to have to talk about her role and how she saw the Tony Abbott government at that particular time. Now, she spent a lot of time justifying what it was like for her and particularly justifying and standing up for her best mate, Tony Abbott. Now, the Crikey magazine did a uh, article on this, which I want to play a bit for you um, and read a bit of it for you, but uh, I've also got a series of clips in relation to Credlin's attempt on Sky News to justify her position and the position of the Abbott government. So here's the bit from the uh, paper. So it says, on Thursday... Peter Credlin, former Chief of Staff and uh, to then Prime Minister Tony Abbott and current News Corp commentator, as we well know she is. Uh, she, uh, she'd watched, she gave a response to the first episode of the ABC's Nemesis, which actually is on, uh, the following next episode is on uh, Monday night. Please watch it. The three-part post-mortem of the coalition government between 2013 and 2022, in the absence of the show of her or Abbott, the former Prime PM to decline the ABC's invitation to one of these retrospectives. In other words, Credlin and Abbott chose uh, that they would not appear on that show. Uh, so she wrote a piece in The Australian trying to justify her position. I'll pay for you exactly what she does say about part of this as well. Uh, part of the reason you're reading me in The Australian today, don't subscribe to The Australian, haven't read it myself. So I'm relying on Crikey to tell me what actually she did say. Uh, when the character of me was created by the plotters out to get Abbott, uh, as a staffer I had no voice, I could not respond, and all I could do was cop it. When that changed, I knew it would be nearly impossible to counter what had been manufactured and that my best response was to enter the public square and let people who had heard the criticisms take a closer look and make up their own minds. Having the top ratings show on Sky News, which she does talk about and is rather proud of, to say the least, um, so, uh, for the past three years is my answer to those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. So what she's doing there is she's saying, well, I'm pretty damn important, and as a result, I've got this fabulous show on Sky News that clearly millions and millions of people watch, and they don't, but nevertheless, she thinks it's a damn good place to be. And it's the only place you probably could get a job to at this particular point in time. It's hardly surprising, given the nature of the program, that the ABC failed to put the record straight on a couple of key issues. 2014 budget did not break election promises. So this is her argument. Now, the ABC were pretty good. For those of you who have uh, the ability uh, and have the access to the ABC it is free to wear after all, then I would uh, suggest that you watch that particular segment because the ABC did all their best to make sure that the commentary was not theirs. The commentary was the, were the interviews that they had with uh, members of the government of the time and how they reflected on specific events. So it lacked the commentary that you get from Sky News. It's really great production. I would suggest that if you can, you watch it. But, I, but Crikey came up with this, which I thought was rather interesting. And I, I love their little comments afterward. Let's interrogate that. Did the 2014 budget keep its promises on the ABC and SBS? According to Crikey, no. Pensions, no. On Medicare locals, nope. 
On personal tax, no, not really, didn't do much about that. Uh, foreign aid, nothing doing there in particular. On health and education, depends on who you ask, fair enough. Um, Indigenous affairs, <laughs> certainly not. Nothing in that that particular area. So these these are, I guess, the arguments that she's trying to put forward to substantiate her position as being this person. Uh, so what I've got here is uh, a number of clips, um, and here is her justification of um, a different Abbott to the one that we would normally identify. Uh, so here's what she has to say about that. If only Abbott had been allowed to get on with the job the coalition was elected to do, we'd have had a budget surplus. Japanese submarines are a much better managed welfare system, tax and federation reform, and a much better managed immigration program. If only yes, Abbott so, had been allowed to... So there we have, we have the reasons why, because uh, Abbott was so good at all these things, when in actual fact he was pretty damn useless, to be honest. And the reason why the Liberal Party got rid of him was because he was just even too far right, even for them. So she goes on to talk about her personal, the personal characteristics that sit with Abbott and herself, and she tries to differentiate these. Now, with time to reflect, it's now clear that one of the key differences between our public life in the Hawke and Howard era, and more recently, has been the decline in personal character. Our best recent PMs were able to succeed because big egos with different policy positions were much readier to buckle down and support the government and the leader of the day. Most of them saw public life in terms of service to the nation rather than personal advancement and didn't let resentments get the better of them if they were never put into cabinet or even if they never got past the backbench. Now, I think that that's an interesting take in that you can't say for a moment, I think, that Abbott wasn't interested in just the political position that he could derive from being in Parliament, that he wanted desperately to be Prime Minister. And it was evident from most of his policies that none of that was about improving the well-being and the lives of the people that voted for him. So I think it's a bit disingenuous what she had to say, but it's her trying to justify the reasons why... Abbott was eventually kicked out because somehow she's decided that she will take the moral high ground. So let's hear what she has to say um, in this particular take. Now, like Abbott, I declined to appear in the program because I was certain of a selective and distorted version of my response to the usual crap that I was too tough. Too tough on entitlements, they said. Well, I tell you, what's the alternative? lose ministers in a first term like the Howard government did? The complaint that MPs couldn't get to Abbott? Come on. You couldn't use a mobile phone? You couldn't walk around to his office or, or perhaps buttonhole him after question time? That I was too outspoken with ministers? Well, isn't that what you pay advisers to do? Speak their mind, not just meekly agree? Now, I served as a political staff for 16 years because I believe in the Liberal Party's values. Perfect? No one is. But I was loyal, absolutely loyal, and always working for the government, not trying to undermine it. Now, like so Abbott, there we have Credlin declaring why it is she declined and Abbott declined to be a part of the Nemesis program. And again, she's endeavouring to be able to take the high ground in relation to such moral issues. So she also has further justification of her position right here. Now, what was on display on Monday night was a Prime Minister doing his best to run the country, to stop the boats, to fix the budget, to scrap the taxes and to build the new roads our country then needed, while being undermined and sabotaged from the very beginning by some of his so-called colleagues. Now, what was on display so on Monday she's night? She's trying to justify here the things that Abbott said he was going to do. And she goes on to highlight many things that he was supposed to do but didn't do. He was unpopular, he was arrogant, and uh, he was misogynist. And uh, none of those things she could think about, none of those things were important to her. It really was for her about the power 
that Abbott eventually was able to attain in terms of being Prime Minister. And I guess for her, there was a great deal of disappointment because she wasn't able to follow through, to, to follow him for many, many years. He spent just not even a full term as uh, Prime Minister and I guess for her, that in itself was a failing. But she does go on to talk about uh, the, the things that were said about her that, were, that she saw, I guess, as negative comments in relation to her. But the pr interesting thing about this clip is that she doesn't attempt to deny any of them. Everything was used against me. Even my years on IVF by low lifes like Clive Palmer. As I said today, some days I honestly, I honestly don't know how I managed to survive, and I mean that on every. So I don't, I don't know whether or not uh, how you feel necessarily about what Credlin attempted to do, but the need to have to go on television and try and justify her position and Abbott's position seems to be a lost cause for me because they're gone, they're no longer relevant. And Abbott himself is attempting to be more and more relevant. And, you know, this man now is on the board of uh, Murdoch Press, Sky News or Fox News in the US. And so they no longer have the influence that they had when they're at the forefront of their professions. And Credlin, in particular, no longer has the credibility that she perhaps once had as being Abbott's offsider. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about Credlin's effort to be able to justify her position? Was it necessary? She might have been better just to shut up, I think. But what do you think in relation to any of that? And if you wish to email me, you can email me on the email address that I've just put down below. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Look after yourselves. And more importantly, be safe.